Welcome to a preview introducing six of the dozen new features and enhancements contained in version 2.2 of the Form Tool, another in a series of free updates for owners of the Form Tool Pro. Here is Scott Campbell, creator of the Form Tool. First off, uh, master lists have been vastly improved. When I go to work with a master list now, uh, with my master list button. This screen now just gives me a preview of a master list, but it's not editable here in this screen. Instead, if I want to make changes to a master list, I click this edit button, and it opens a Word document that serves as my, my blackboard, my editing screen for this master list. I can add columns, add rows, make any changes I need to here, here, uh, and it's really easy to do because I'm just typing in a Word document at this point instead of dealing with an interface. If I want to add another row, it's, I just add a row here by pressing tab and uh, we've got Gretel at some address. Another improvement in master list is I can now use multi-line entries in the master list. Before you had to put everything on a single line so it was tough to deal with addresses. Now you can put an entire address, however many lines, all in one entry in a master list. Uh, bar number. Another improvement is master lists can now include up to 63 columns instead of their previous limit of 10 columns. Uh, and adding columns and adding rows you can do by the standard word mechanisms, which if you're not familiar with them, down here in the footer, I've got a list of uh, shortcuts that you can use to add rows, add columns. Once you've made all the changes you want to your master list, as it says here up at the top, you just need to click the master lists button a second time and click this Save and Close button. If you wanted to make some more changes, you could return with the Continue Editing, or if you wanted to scrap all of the changes you've made, you could cancel out. But I'm going to hit Save and Close to save all of those changes. And the uh, editing screen goes away, and all those changes are saved to my master list. The next uh, new feature is Dividers. If you have a Q&A table, which is lengthy, this one's not terribly lengthy, but I'm going to pretend it is, you can now use dividers to split it up into units that are easy for your form user to comprehend. Uh, let's say here I'm beginning with several questions related to the court, so I'm going to put in a divider, row, divider, add, and I'll call this my court information section. Then I have some information about the client here. I'll put in another divider. Call this client info. Uh, here I have information about the opponent. And so on. I'll skip down to the end here. Here I have some billing information. So I'll add a divider there. So it's easy for the form user to uh, wrap their mind around what you're asking them for here. You can also get art artsy with it. Uh, I'll put my cursor here in, the, here in the first section and say I want to make that uh, green. And I want my second section here to be blue and so on. Let's go with purple here so that you can color code your information, uh, you can relate some sections to other sections with your use of color, and you can make the form user all feel happy as they're filling in the Q&A table. Uh, then I've got four new buttons I'll show you. One of them you might have noticed already. It's this new Start button. Uh, this is here so that it's now easier to tell form users how to use your forms. Uh, before, you used to have to tell them, okay, open the form and then scroll to the end of the document and then go up to the top of the table that you find there and start answering the questions. Instead, now you can just tell them to open up the form and click the Start button. It jumps the cursor straight down to the first, answer that uh, first question that requires an answer and they're ready to start typing. It's also useful for form creators because they can, uh, as they're working on the form, anytime you want to jump down and take a quick look at your Q&A table, you can just click start 
and it jumps your cursor down to the Q&A table. Another new button is in the field screen. If I'm inserting a field, I now have a new search button up here. Sometimes you'll get forms with a long list of fields and it's difficult to find the one you're after. Click the search button and then just start typing. If I type uh, attorney here, I get a list of the fields that contain the word attorney. If I type address, there's only one that contains address. If I type a name, there's my fields that contain the word name. Uh, it's a live search box, so as you type, it will uh, filter the list of field names to, to only ones that contain what you've typed. If I type NO, then I just get those fields. Uh, another button is the new clear answers button. As you're creating a form, you'll often put in a lot of test data just to try out the form and make sure, make sure it's working the way you like it. But then when you're finished, before you save the form for other people to use, you have to empty out all of this information that you typed in. So now there's a button under tools here called clear answers that will just empty out all of that sample data for you in one click and then you can save your form for other people to use it. And the last button I'll show you is the new find and paste feature. Uh, suppose in this form that I'm creating I realize, oh hey, everywhere that uh, Jill Glass's name appears I need to put in a field for the attorney name. So I'll select Jill Glass there, click field just like usual. I choose the attorney name field and insert it. And then instead of clicking done, because I've added the field right here, I'm going to click this new find other locations to paste this field button. It's the find and paste feature. I click that. It pulls in Jill Glass as what I'm searching for. I could change that if I wanted to. And it's going to replace the word Jill Glass with attorney name everywhere it finds it. I'll click replace all. And it has replaced it in two places, it tells me. There's one of them here, and there's one of them here. That same feature can be used at any time uh, with any copied material. If I wanted, for instance, to grab this whole pair of conditions, I can just copy that. I'm pressing Control C on my keyboard to copy it. And then I can search for any text and replace that text with the contents of what I just copied using this new find and paste button. I'll click that. I'll search for the word Wisconsin and I'm going to be replacing it with all of this material that I copied. Instead of replacing all this time, I'll click find next so that I can verify uh, and say, oh, well, I don't want to replace it right there. So I'll find the next one uh, here. Yes, I do want to replace it. So I'll hit replace here. Yes, I do want to replace it. So I'll hit replace. And then we're back up to the top again. You can, in this screen, click the More button, and you get all of the standard search options that you're used to seeing in Word. Uh, but usually, just this much will do the job for you.